The modern city of Pittsburgh, awkwardly located between the Midwest and East Coast, but for the purposes of this story, we need the Pittsburgh of approximately 1750. Or more accurately, the uncolonized territory of Pennsylvania? Virginia? France? Anyway, whoever you want to say it belonged to at the time, take your pick. This uncertainty about who had the best claim over the rich Ohio River Valley territory would eventually trigger a war between France and Great Britain in 1754. By the winter of 1753, a group of English and Virginian colonists had realized the potential of the Ohio River Valley and received a grant of land for 200,000 acres. I guess from whoever had the authority to give out land that had never really been explored. Which of course is the king being across an ocean and obviously being very knowledgeable about the territory he was giving away. But meanwhile, the French having already previously settled Louisiana in New France, effectively modern-day Canada, wanted to secure their north-to-south route in between their two colonies. And what better way to do that than the Ohio River, which after joining the Mississippi, will take you from just south of Lake Erie all the way to New Orleans. It became a race on a massive scale to see who could claim the area and hold it first. The Virginia governor, Robert Dinwiddie, it's not really that important, I really just wanted to say his name, sent an emissary with eight others to go tell the French that were advancing towards the Ohio Valley that it was rightfully Virginian territory. This young emissary, at the age of 21, was none other than George Washington. Wait, hold on. This is Pennsylvania. Why are, why are we talking about the Virginia governor? Oh right, Virginia literally claimed everything for decades. Washington set forth with this small party in the winter of 1753 towards where the French were known to be building forts in what would today be northwestern Pennsylvania. The French promptly told him to... No, now go away or I shall taunt you a second time! That's a lie. Apparently they politely told him no. Before even hearing of the result of Washington's mission to the French, the Virginia governor had sent a small force to start building a fort here, the site of modern Pittsburgh and the strategic point, the intersection of three rivers that form the start of the valuable Ohio River Valley. When Washington arrived back and reported the French response to the governor, he was promoted to lieutenant colonel and told to take troops to defend the new fort. It's also worth noting this would be the start of Washington's professional military career which should go without saying, was pretty important. Unfortunately for the British, and the young Washington, on his way there he met the refugees of the men who were to work on the fort. Anyone who noticed that the image of the fort on screen has a French name, it's not because the British forgot what language they speak, but because the French had basically walked up to the fort and kicked out the British, and immediately started to continue construction. Once completed, it would be christened Fort Duquesne, named in honor of the governor of New France, the Marquis de Duquesne. Keep in mind, this all happened within a few months, and when Washington arrived back in what is modern western Pennsylvania in May 1754, he would need to wait for new orders now that the situation had drastically changed as the half-constructed fort had fallen well before he arrived. Washington went about setting up camp with his 159 men, already low on supplies, on May 24, 1754. He also started construction of the aptly named Fort Necessity in case of an attack by the French. After being located in this location for several days, Washington received word that several miles away, six according to Google Maps and modern roads, was encamped a small detachment of French troops. Washington, in a short battle, would force the surrender of these Frenchmen in what would become known as the Battle of Jumonville Glen, named for the French commander who was killed at the battle, Joseph Coulon de Villiers de Jumonville. Bear with me here on these pronunciations, I'm trying my best. You might be thinking, why does this little skirmish, literally in a ditch in the backwoods of the colonial frontier, matter at all? For starters, it was the first military engagement that George Washington participated in, which is pretty cool. But it's also the first shots of the Seven Years' War. If you ever browse r slash history memes for any amount of time, you've probably heard uh, the Seven Years' War actually lasted nine years or seen this meme. The reason for the discrepancy is because the French and the British were fighting from 1754 to 1755 in the Americas, and fighting on the European continent did not begin until 1756 and which, as mentioned, George Washington was leading the British forces in this albeit small first battle in 1754. Back to the events of the title of the video. I promise we are going to get there. Washington feared a French retaliation for his initial victory at Jumonville Glen and set about shoring up the defenses of Fort Necessity. He received reinforcements early in June, bringing the force under his command to 393 men and nine swivel cannons. He then spent the next month working on roads... For some reason, there really is a disproportionate amount of road building in this story, which I guess makes sense since they're literally wandering around the frontier. But anyway, I digress. Washington soon received reports of an advancing French force from Fort Duquesne. 
On the morning of July 3rd, 600 French and 100 Indian allies surrounded the fort and bombarded it from the surrounding trees and hills. It also didn't help that it was raining all day. Washington had built his fort in a marsh at a low point in the surrounding area, allowing British troops inside the fort to essentially be sitting ducks and be soaked through. By the end of the day, the French requested a truce to discuss the terms of surrender for the British forces. Captain Louis Coulon de Villiers, the leader of the French forces who had just defeated George Washington, and notably the only person to ever force the surrender of George Washington. Honestly, quite an honor for the Frenchman. I hope you might be realizing why the French name I mentioned might just be a little familiar. When I was doing my research, this is when I came to the realization that the captain who he had just surrendered to and the officer he killed at the first battle were in fact brothers, and Washington was now working out surrender terms with the brother of the officer who had died in the battle he had led. As you can probably guess, it is not that hard to believe that Captain de Villiers might have just more than a little motivation to get back at Washington. and proceeded to do just that in the terms of surrender. Here is the text of said document. Night having fallen, Washington not being able to speak French, and there apparently being wet paper on the documents they were looking at. There was obviously some translation issues in the treaty that ended up being signed between Washington and de Villiers. Washington thought he was admitting to having just killed or caused the death of Jamonville. But in later, retranslated portions of the document, the French accused that his mother was a hamster and that his father smelt of elderberries. Wait, that can't be right. Hold on. Ah, yes, they accused him of assassinating Captain Louis Coulon de Villiers' brother, and the French had gotten him to sign the document. Except for his own humiliation and the loss of his heavier guns, Washington and his forces were allowed to withdraw without any other stipulations. We finally reached the title of the video, and obviously the French won the war in the Americas. Nous avons tout grandi et apprenons le français. Vive la France, vive le roi. Quel? Le français non pas gagné? Well, uh... Anyway, with Washington defeated, the obvious British response was to send a full army. Approximately 1,300 according to this sign. Under the command of Major General Braddock, who was not a colonist but a military officer from Great Britain itself. In the spring of 1755, Braddock was tasked with the taking of Fort Duquesne from the French. He was also accompanied by, you probably guessed it, George Washington, who was unofficially invited and joined to take the opportunity to observe an actual professional British officer in the field. So Braddock advanced on Fort Duquesne and was utterly repulsed in an ambush that would allude to the tactics used by some certain colonists in a certain revolution about 30 years later. The British forces being completely routed back along the road they had made past the previous defensive location at Fort Necessity. Okay, remember when I mentioned earlier the roads took up a strangely large part of this story? General Braddock was mortally wounded on the retreat from the failed assault against the French, as the French and their Indian allies were harassing the British retreat. One mile from Fort Necessity, General Braddock died. He was buried in the middle of the road him and Washington had constructed on their way to assault the fort at the Three Rivers. The ceremony was presided over by Washington. While not his personal defeat, he was once again part of the military expedition that had failed against the French. Thus ends this chapter of the French and Indian War, or seven, <clears throat> nine, years war. I find this event particularly fascinating due to its involvement with George Washington and its larger connection to the European side of the conflict. Hopefully this was an entertaining and informative video. Links to the sources will be added below.